Have you ever wanted to import external SVG files into Hype, and then, be able to animate them to make motion graphics? SVG is the most powerful and flexible image format. As the name implies, SVG images are scalable, and therefore, resolution independent. They also have a relatively small footprint, no matter what the final image size ends up being. Just like regular web pages, there are several ways to bring SVGs into Hype. These range from simple image import to nesting SVG code directly inside Hype elements. Adding SVG code directly to the Hype canvas is the equivalent of embedding it in the body of a web page. This inline approach gives you the best performance in the browser, and the ability to programmatically access all, or even parts of the vector image. You have been able to create and animate vector graphics, natively inside Hype, since Hype 4 was released. While this capability was a huge step forward, it still means that you have to recreate images inside of the program if you want to animate them. This means that you can't easily import stock vectors, or repurpose, existing images you have already drawn elsewhere. And, if you are like me, this is a significant pain point because it means a lot of unnecessary work to recreate images inside of Hype. It also means the complexity of the final image is likely less because of the relatively simple drawing tools available within the app. So, you may be wondering whether it is possible to overcome this limitation and animate external SVG files inside Hype. Well, the answer to that question is yes, and I've made this video to show you how. There are two main ways to bring SVG files into Hype. Simple image import through the resources pane, here. And, embedding SVG code directly inside elements on the Hype canvas. There are pros and cons for each of these approaches. Direct image importing into the resources pane is straightforward and easy. Simply click the plus button here, select a file, and then drag it to the canvas. Importing an SVG in this way is just like importing a regular PNG or JPEG image file. And Hype treats SVG images added this way, just like it treats JPEG or PNG images. The downside to this approach is that you can't get access to any of the parts, or properties, that make up the SVG. In comparison, adding SVG code directly to an element on the Hype canvas creates what is called an inline element. This means that JavaScript functions written in Hype have the ability to programmatically access parts or properties of the SVG which are labeled with specific identifiers or classes. Adding images in this way is more complicated, but significantly more powerful. Let me show you exactly how to embed SVG code directly into an empty element on the Hype canvas. To get started, you need to generate that empty element. You can do that by simply dropping a rectangle shape directly onto the canvas. I'm going to resize my rectangle to cover the entire canvas. Whether or not you do this, depends on the final size you want for your graphic element. You can change this rectangle size by dragging its corner points, or by specifying exact pixel values in the properties panel here. And depending on your animation goals, you may also want to remove the border and the color fill from this shape, but I'm going to leave mine in place for now. Next, you need to get access to the inner HTML of this element. You can do this in three different ways. The simplest way, is to click directly on the rectangle. Once you do that, a small button pops up at the base of the rectangle, here. Clicking on this button pulls up a blank dialog window. Into this window, you can potentially paste all kinds of HTML, CSS, or JavaScript code that help define the appearance and behavior of this element. However, we are going to paste in some SVG code that I have previously copied to the clipboard. Once we do that and click away to hide the inner HTML dialog, you can see that the original rectangle has been filled with the same SVG image I had imported directly before. Only now, it is nested or embedded code, and there is no sign of it in the resource pane. So the trick here is embedding SVG code directly into the inner HTML of a blank element. The other ways you can access this inner HTML dialog are from the edit menu, using the option labeled, edit elements inner HTML, or by using the keyboard shortcut, command, option, E. The next step after you have embedded SVG code in a hype element, is to add identifiers, or classes, to the parts of the code you want to animate. If these SVG parts are single paths, or isolated shapes, you would add an identifier within that part of the SVG. If there are several similar parts, or parts you want to animate as a group, then you would add a class to each corresponding part of the SVG. In my example, I have three different components I want to manipulate separately, so I'm going to add three new identifiers to the code I have already embedded. You do this by editing the code inside the element, using one of the methods I mentioned earlier. Let's do that now. So, 
If I click on the map element to select it, and then, go command, option, E, that inner HTML window is launched, and I can go in and edit the code. The parts of the SVG I want to target are, the start pin, the path, and the finish pin. I will leave the rest of the map as is. There is a lot of code to scroll through in that inner HTML window, so I'm going to enlarge it so you can see what parts of the code I'm changing. I've focused on code towards the end of my SVG file, where I know the three map elements I'm interested in are described. I know it might look unreadable at first but let me show you the code segment that corresponds to the map elements that I'm interested in. The easiest part to recognize is the path between the start and finish pins. It is here. You can see it is just a simple SVG path. The start and finish pins are a little more complicated, because they are composed of several independent SVG shapes. You can see the start pin code here. While the finish pin code is here. Next, I'm going to add three distinct identifiers to this code. One for each of these code segments. I'm just going to name these identifiers, start, path, and finish. Once I've done that, the edited code looks like this. You can see the three new identifiers I've added to the code, circled here. It is important that these identifiers are placed just inside the tags outlining the SVG part that you are planning to animate. This could mean being inside a simple path tag, or inside a group tag, that encompasses other SVG shapes or paths, like the start and finish pins, we added it here. Now I have a way to reference these SVG parts, the next step is to add JavaScript code to animate them. To animate this SVG, you need to know what code to use, and where to put it. The what part of this equation involves two important pieces of JavaScript code. Firstly, we need to define how to get a programmatic reference to the SVG elements that we are interested in. For this, I'll use the identifiers I placed inside the SVG earlier. The second piece of code defines the correct syntax to change the attributes of this element. In its general form, the JavaScript syntax to get a programmatic reference looks like this. Applying this code structure to define a reference for the finish pin on our map, we get this code. Notice the way I have defined the selectors parameter here. Because it is an identifier, rather than a class or a variable, we must do two things. Put the name of the identifier in quotes, and preface the identifier name with a hashtag to show it is an identifier. Once we have a reference to an element's identifier, we can set any of the attributes it possesses. The best function to do this is, set, attribute, and s. This is different to the syntax you might normally employ to change regular DOM elements. In fact, this syntax is required to act on SVGs, which are essentially XML files. For our purposes, the first element property we want set is opacity, which we will want set to zero when the scene first loads. To do this, three parameters need to be passed to this function. The NS, or namespace, can be set to null because it isn't being used here. The second parameter, opacity, is the one being changed. And the final parameter is the value we want to set, which is zero in this case. With that taken care of, we need to address where this code should be placed, so let's do that now. So here we are, inside Hype, ready to change the appearance of our SVG map. I want this scene to first appear with only the start pin showing. So we need code to set the opacity of the path, and finish pin, to zero. The best place to do this is in a custom function launch during the time the scene loads. You do that by going to the scene panel, here. And then, add a new on scene load action that calls a custom JavaScript function. I've named this custom function, map setup. You can see what code is in this function by clicking on its tab of the interface, here. Inside this function, you can see the code for the finish pin we wrote earlier, together with the corresponding code for the path, that we also want to hide. When you run this animation in a browser, you can see the initial appearance of our map has the start pin visible while the path, and finish pin, are missing. This is exactly what we wanted. Next, we'll see how to sequentially reanimate these elements, by using similar custom functions, placed along Hype's main timeline. Hype's main timeline is the best place to sequentially reanimate the hidden parts of our map. We do this by going to the main timeline, here, and then, repositioning the playhead to a point where we want this reanimation to occur. Next, we need to launch a new timeline action that calls a new JavaScript function. The role of this function is to return the opacity of the path, and finish pin, back to 100%. You do this by clicking on this little diamond icon, here. This time, I'm going to name this function, showRoot. 
You can see what the code in this function is by clicking on its tab just above the main canvas, here. Not too surprisingly, this code uses the same, set, attribute, ns function call that we used earlier. Only this time, we are setting the opacity back to 100% for two elements at once. Now, if we run this animation in the browser, you can see how that path, and the finish pin, are revealed together after a 3 second delay. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed this short video clip demonstrating how to make motion graphics in Hype from external SVG files. This video barely scratched the surface of what is possible. There are more advanced ways to animate vectors in Hype, and of course, many more SVG properties that can be manipulated. Are you interested to see other videos describing how to make motion graphics in Hype? Well, I've prepared a package containing more demo videos, Hype project files, and resource libraries together with some documentation describing ways to optimize your motion graphic production workflow. If you are interested to learn more about this package, contact me at alteredmindware at gmail.com for more information.